Hey guys, what's going on? Brad London here. You guys know what to do. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's get straight into today's video. So we're going to start off with some Kai Havertz news, which I'm sure you'll be glad to hear. Chelsea's interest in Kai Havertz takes fresh twist as star sets transfer deadline. So basically, if you haven't heard, uh, Kai Havertz has spoken out saying that he is open to delaying his exit by another year, but he wants his future sorted by the end of the summer transfer window. That's essentially the bulk of the article there. And that sets a very interesting situation because, of course, we know that um, Bayern definitely can't buy him this year, possibly can next year. Real Madrid have said that they're probably not going to be uh, going this year, but in a year's time would potentially consider it due to you know, the finances involved. It's going to be a lot of money. Uh, so they're thinking, you know what, maybe in a year's time we'd be able to afford it depending on how well they recover from this pandemic, but not this year. Uh, Chelsea, of course, are one of the clubs that would be able to uh, pay this year and be able to bring him on board at the end of this current season, ready for next season, which I think is his preference. Um, you know, if you read between the lines a little bit, uh, that's clearly his preference is he wants a guaranteed deal by the end of the summer, which we don't know if Bayern, like, yes, they've said that they're willing to wait a year, uh, Real Madrid and Bayern, but are they able to set a figure in stone right now for a year's time? We don't know that. Can they say, okay, in a year's time, we'll be able to offer you 70, 80 million. Can they say that with certainty now? Not, not so sure, is it? Whereas Chelsea, we're able to say, one, we could give you that fee now and we could bring you in for the end of the season um, so that you're with us next season. Or if you really do want to stay another year, which I don't think he does, I think he'd prefer to move uh, this summer, then we can guarantee that we'll pay it in a year's time uh, if you agree to join us uh, at that time, which would be a good deal for everyone involved. Personally, I'd prefer to make sure that we get him for the next transfer window, uh, for the next season rather. So I would rather say, yep, yeah, we can pay it and we'll pay it and you'll join us at the end of the season. Yep, sound good. That sounds good to me. Um, but it's an interesting situation. It opens the door a little bit for Bayern Munich and Manchester United, possibly, as well as Real Madrid. So it's opened the door a bit for them, which is not good in terms of Chelsea, you know, being the, the only club that can get him because he wants to leave this summer. Um, but he does want a decision like set in stone. And they might not be able to offer that because, of course, they can't guarantee that they're going to make this much money. Like they can't guarantee what if another spike happens or something. Football has to shut down again, and then they'll be like, well, we said we could pay 70, 80 million, but, you know, the situation happened with an, a second spike or, you know, some sort of problem within the club, um, and we can't pay that now, whereas Chelsea are one of the few clubs that can guarantee finances at this point. So we are still in a strong position um, in terms of when are we going to see some actual movement. I think it's just going to be an if and when sort of scenario. I don't think we're going to see any guaranteed stuff, you know, like in the next week or two. Uh, I think we'll see it towards the end of maybe of the Bayer Leverkusen, uh, the Bundesliga season. Maybe then we'll start seeing a little bit of concrete movement one way or the other. And maybe we'll see, you know, Chelsea putting in another bid because we've supposedly put in, I think it was 75 million. They value them at 90 million. So, you know, there's a bit of working room there. Maybe we're working behind the scenes now. Who knows? And we know that Chelsea are trying to be very secretive with their deals. So we might not even know about this deal until it ends up being like announced by one of the reporters saying, yep, they've basically confirmed the deal to me. Uh, expect an announcement within the coming days. So we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys up to date, of course. Uh, but yeah, as of now, Chelsea's still in the strong position, probably the strongest position. Um, but it does open the door a little bit for the other clubs, Bayern, Real, maybe Man United, but I don't think so. Then this one is definitely one I want you guys to take with a pinch of salt because the source, I don't know how reliable it is, um, but there's some transfer comments about Kai Havertz that get Chelsea fans really excited. And if we scroll down, the source is former Liverpool midfielder Charlie, uh, Charlie Adam says he's heard Chelsea are close to sealing a deal for Kai Havertz. Now, that is very open for interpretation. Does that mean he's heard from, you know, a mate of his that's a journalist that, you know, is close to the agent or something like that? Maybe. Does it mean that he's read reports like we have that says Chelsea have bid 75 million, which is, you know, a close fee to the 90 million that they want? Maybe that's what he meant. So it's very open for interpretation. We don't know if it means, you know, that he knows a guy that knows a guy that says it's happening or if it is him just saying, oh, I've read reports, Chelsea are in for him, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's a difficult one. Um, he goes on further down into the article, article and says, this lad from Liverpool's in Havertz, I'm hearing is close to being done. So I mean, like that's that makes me think it's a little bit more like 
you know, it's close to being done. That's not like, oh, they've submitted a bid, you know, they're in contact or something. Close to being done is like a phrase you'd say when it's like, yeah, we get it, we've agreed it, you know, a base contract fee. We're looking at, you know, add on clauses, um, bonuses, stuff like that. That's to me what close to being done means. And the player is convinced that, you know, he'd want to join Chelsea. So, could be massive news. This could be like, oh, Jada Sancho is about to, not Jada Sancho, Kai Havertz is about to join us. Like, oh my God. It could also very much be that he's read reports, um, just like we have that I've brought to you guys, saying Chelsea have bid this, and he sees that as close to being done. I don't know. So, very open to interpretation, um, but could mean something amazing, could also just be what we know already. So, it's a difficult one to interpret. I'll leave you guys, let me know what you think in the comment section about this one. I personally think, you know, it's very possible he's within the football world, so it's very possible he knows a journalist or an agent or something like that that is telling them yeah like this deal this deal is going to happen like they're they're in deep contract talks at the moment that is very possible but is he just saying it the thing is he doesn't even really have much to gain from saying yeah i'm hearing it's close to being done what does he gain from that realistically not so much so i don't know it, it could be big news could not be we'll see how it plays out in the coming days i suppose And then just one little tidbit about that Aston Villa game. If you guys didn't see uh, John Terry's reaction to Aston Villa's goal when they went a goal up against this, I don't know if you guys like, watched the game or whatever, I hope you did, but um, there's basically a load of people that noticed that John Terry literally took like a, like a, a heartbreaking like sigh and just like, oh no, moment when his team, Aston Villa, scored against Chelsea. So a lot of people are saying, that, you know, is this a sign that... John Terry might have a future role at the club, you know, like he wants to come in and maybe be a coach or be an assistant manager or something along those lines. Uh, maybe one of the board members, you never know. But very interesting. Uh, John Terry like sees his team score and he's there like, ah, oh, man, that's disappointing. <laughs> so we'll see how that one plays out. Maybe in the future years, we'll see John Terry back at the bridge. I think we'd all enjoy that. And then on from that uh, Aston Villa game again, Frank Lampard worried by Chelsea's poor finishing in the Aston Villa win. And I think he's very, very right to, to feel that way. Uh, he admits he was frustrated and worried by his side's wayward finishing. We controlled the match at Villa Park, but they found themselves behind at the break after uh, Courtney House, House, I don't know, struck from close range after a free kick. Um, he's, you know, he had a little bit of a um, weird lineup. We had Giroud, William, and Loftus Cheek as the wingers, which was a very weird one. I, I, I thought Christensen should have been starting, um, and he proved it by coming on and absolutely uh, do like dominating the game after he came on. But he said, "As we stood at halftime, without a doubt, I was worried that it gave him an opportunity to be solid against us and to break on us. We had to keep doing well, uh, what we did in the first half, to keep doing it." not to get bored we had to keep going down the sides we got down the right hand side a lot in the game and eventually we got a goal from it we expected to dominate the game with the greatest respect to villa the way we've been training the way we move the ball the things we try to do to get into the 18 yard bo uh, box we did pretty well but sometimes there's little areas around the edge of the box where we can do better hopefully that will improve but that's been the story of our season there's been nothing new uh, today to play well concede now to fight our way to victory we haven't always got this victory and that's the next stage for us and to try and be more clinical for the moments when we're on top and very very true points from Lampard there like it shows great signs of a manager as well to you know be able to say yes we won the game sure in the end I'm happy but there are aspects like it can be seen as like oh he's just such a negative you know attitude towards things but you have to have that sort of attitude as a manager if you want to improve and I think it's possibly going to be the downfall of Liverpool like I think Liverpool need to improve on their squad they need better depth in wingers uh, their centre mid could use a bit of depth if their fullbacks are out they don't have anyone who can provide like chances like they do and I think that'll be the downfall of Liverpool because it doesn't seem like they're insisting on signing uh, like better squad depth and improving their current squad and like you see like Timo Werner would have been a great signing for them because he can play anywhere across the front three and it would be a perfect guy that like, yeah, he can start a few games, but he can also come off the bench and be like to the same quality of a Firmino. He can score more goals than Firmino. Um, I create chances like Mane and Sal and all that sort of stuff. So I think that'll be the downfall of Liverpool. And I think that's ve one very, very good attribute that Frank Lampard has is he can see errors before they're even an issue. And he's been saying this from like from our first few games. He was saying like, look, we're not finishing well enough. We need to be putting chances away because we're allowing teams to 
you know, have the opportunity to grow into the game. And if you allow them that, they probably will, which we've seen a lot this season. So very good um, sort of insight into how Frank Lampard uh, is going to be managing this team. You know, he is not ever satisfied with if we win the league, I'm confident that Frank Lampard will say, you know, no, nah, we need to improve on this area, this this right back, maybe not right back because it's Rich James, but this centre mid that we've got, not good enough anymore. We need a replacement um, and also competition for that role to, you know, breed players to improve. So I'm seeing such good signs from Frank Lampard as manager. I really, really do think he is going to be the first English manager to win the Premier League. And I think we could see it within the next few years. So get excited, guys, because these next few years are going to be insane. Timo Werner obviously is a great signing. Hakim Ziyech, great signing and Kai Havertz possibly on the way maybe uh, Tagliafico is very possible Ben Chilwell I th his performance in the Leicester game was poor and I think Frank might have seen that and I'm hoping is thinking you know what maybe Tagliafico is a good option so we'll see how it all pans out but I think Frank is such a smart um, person in general as well as a football minded person um, I think he'll make the right decision so very good signs from Frank. Um, of course, the Aston Villa game had areas where we need to improve, and I think he knows how to fix it. So exciting things for next season, but we have got to see out the rest of the season as it is. But I'm going to end the video there, guys. So don't forget to like the video, um, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section down below, and I'll address them in a future video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again. Goodbye.